Hey, it is Kenny from Kenny's Audio File Record Reviews. Thank you very much for viewing my channel. Please like and subscribe. I sincerely appreciate that. In this video, um, yeah, I'm going to answer the question. Are there any easy listening albums in, in this record collection behind me? We're going to get into that in this video. I know a lot of the, um, the hype, the attention, you know, all of that goes to some of these... In the VC community, a lot of that attention goes to some of these high-quality reissue sets. You know, a lot of these videos, a lot of attention, um, a lot of the accolades goes to some of these reissue sets. A lot of it goes to some of these jazz reissue uh, albums, like from the Tone Poets or the Blue Note series. A lot of um, attention in the vinyl community and hype goes to issues like that. A lot of uh, attention is pointed at, you know, some of these jazz releases. And deservedly so, because some of them are actually pretty good. Some of them go towards some of these uh, rock releases. A lot of it goes to some of these rock releases, other genres, you know, like, you know, Beyonce. A lot of uh, uh, attention is pointed in those direction in those directions are some of these old school fabulous records like you know Parliament Funkadelic is a great album by the way or you know old school R and B Soul War Brother Isaac Hayes a lot of attention in a vinyl community goes to you know art some of these old school R and B acts matter of fact maybe not even enough goes to r b be honest with you or brother james brown in the background a lot of attention goes to a lot of old school old school records and stuff but a lot of hype a lot of attention does not go towards the easy listening genre i get it a lot of you got out there don't like it but there's great music everywhere in every genre. I know you're going to say, Kenny, you're not a, a fan of country. And that's true. But I do love brother um, Johnny Cash. You know, I do like Johnny Cash. That being said, there is uh, great music in every genre. And I think the easy listening genre is one that is overlooked. And yes, I do have some easy listening records in my record collection. And then in this video, I'm going to get to maybe 10 or 11 of some of my favorite um, easy listening songs by some of my favorite easy listening artists. And you should definitely check them out because I think they're pretty cool. I think they're great songs to vibe to. Um, a lot of the, the choices in this video aren't like some of the more popular uh, easy listening artists. There's some artists that you know, they, they're crossover artists. They can be in jazz and, you know, easy listening or pop and easy listening like Glenn Campbell. Um, you know, the Carpenters could, could be considered easy listening for sure. And to a lesser degree, even Frank Sinatra. I'm, I'm not going to concentrate on some of the uh, major artists, maybe a few of them are in, my, in, my, in the 10 or 11 I'm going to mention, but I'm going to concentrate on some that aren't as popular and some that uh, I think deserve some attention. And there's some great songs. I'm going to mention some of their, uh, some of their great songs. I'm not going to, you know, Nat King Cole, Nat the King Cole, he can be uh, considered easy listening, but I'm not going to uh, talk about him during these, this video. Just some people who are a little bit off the tr main track that I think deserve some attention. And I'm going uh, to mention 10 songs by these, 10 or 11 songs by these 10 or 11 groups or artists in the easily listening genre that I think are actually great and pretty good. And you should definitely check them out. And uh, by the way, I'll leave the links to all these songs I mentioned in this video in the um, uh, description below. <coughs> Excuse me. But I'm going to start off, like I said, I'm going to mention approximately 10. And I'm going to start off by a great piano player, Peter Nero. He was a, a, a magnificent piano player. And just because Peter Nero decided to go 
in the easy listening route to earn a living, it doesn't necessarily mean he was not just as good of a piano player as Herbie Hancock, Bill Evans, or Ahmad Jamal. I know the jazz genre is a different skill set in terms of, you know, the way they play, the way they vibe, their approach musically than easy listening. But it does not necessarily mean that Peter Nero was not, uh, not it was uh, just as good the, as those, because I think he was. He was a magnificent piano player. And there's a song on this record called Theme from Harlow. Theme from Harlow. And you have to listen to the song all the way through. All these songs I'm mentioning in this video, please listen to them all the way through and give them a chance and give the, uh, the music, you know, the vibe of the music a chance to digest with you. But this uh, theme, from, uh, theme from Harlow is a great song by the uh, piano player Peter Nero. This is a screen scene album that was re uh, released in 1966. So Theme from Harlow is on my list of uh, some of my, one of my favorite easy listening songs. Another one is by Tony Bennett. Now, the song that I'm mentioning is not on this record. And it's definitely not, not the song I Left My Heart in San Francisco. That's not even close to being my favorite Tony Bennett song. It's a good song, but I don't vibe to it and get into it like a lot of you out there. It's not my favorite Tony Bennett song. My favorite Tony Bennett song was released in 1954. And it's called Stranger in Paradise. That's an amazing vocal, a song. Great delivery, you know. Like I say, I, I really vibe and groove to that song more than any other Tony Bennett song, perhaps. Stranger in Paradise, released in 1954 by Tony Bennett. And I put that in an easy listening category because it has a, a soft vibe to it. Another one, and I did a video on this song, and I'll leave the link to this video in the description below. Liz Damon in the Orient Express, they had a song called 1900 Yesterday. And it was issued, or I think, around 1970. And it's a, it's a, it's a fabulous vocal song, a soft vocal song by this group. It, re it, it really is. 1900 Yesterday by Liz Damon in the Orient Express. This is an obvious choice. Um, this album, this 1970 uh, song is called, from Paul uh, Maria, it's called Love is Blue. And this was a, a smash hit song in 1968. I think it went to number one. I th it actually did on a Billboard Top uh, 100 chart. I'm going to leave a link to a video I did on this uh, song as well. Love is Blue by Paul uh, Marriott, the instrumental hit, the easy listening hit in 1968 that made it to number one on the pop charts. Another one is from the movie The Sterile uh, Cuckoo. The Sterile Cuckoo was a, a film um, star, that starred Eliza Minnelli in 19, um, I believe 1969. Liza Minnelli was a great singer in her own right, a very good singer in my opinion. She's the daughter of the great Judy Garland. But there's a song from that movie, The Stero Cuckoo, that is a fabulous vocal song, and it's by the group the Sandpipers. The Sandpipers were on uh, A&M Records. This is a reissue on Pickwick Records. And the name of the song from the movie is called Come Saturday Morning. And it's a fabulous vocal song, a fabulous, easy listening folk, vocal song that's easy to get into, understand, and vibe to. It's a great song. Come Saturday Morning by the Sandpipers from 1969, 1969, 1970. Also, that band um, is a trio of singers. Um, the Sandpipers are actually known for the hit Guantanamera. 
again, this is on A&M Records. Another relatively unknown singer, and this singer is from Australia, out of Australia. Her name is Lana Cantrell. And no, she's not related to the R&B singer, Blue Cantrell. But Lana Cantrell, this is a 19, um, what year is this, 1967. And there's a song on here, it's called, um, I Will Wait For You. And she, her vocal performance on the song, I Will Wait For You, is spectacular. She had a great singing voice, uh, Lana uh, Cantrell. It's just, she came in, in during that era with Barbara Streisand and some of those other great singers. And there's only room for so, oh so many. But she had a magnificent voice, an underrated voice, Lana Cantrell. And the name of the song is I Will Wait For You. This one is obvious to me. I This has been one of my favorites for decades, actually. And it's from the great Johnny Mathis. And the name of the song is Wonderful, Wonderful by Johnny Mathis. It's a great vocal, great vocal song. Another underrated singer, uh, I think, uh, this, this uh, singer is a male singer. He, has a under, he had an underrated singing voice at the time, and I think the year was 1967. Uh, he had the hit, um, The Last Waltz is the name of the song. And um, it's, it's just a spectacular uh, vocal performance by Engelbert. He just goes by Engelbert. That's how uh, well known he was. He had it all going on. I mean, he had the looks. He had the voice. He was like um, Tom Jones in, in, in a way. Engelbert Humperdinck. The Last Waltz is the name of the song. This one is um, one of my favorite singers of all time. He has an underrated singing voice. He should be on the top 10 on anybody's top 10 male singing, uh, uh, male singers, in my opinion, one of the greatest pure singers of all time. And that's Andy Williams. Spectacular voice. The song on here, um, what is the name of the song real quick? Um, when I Look Into Your Eyes is the name of the song. And near the end of the song, how he holds that note for a bit is just beautiful and spectacular. You got to listen to the whole song and the ending of the song, how he holds that, that, that note at the end of the song. The great Andy Williams. He's known for his hit, Moon River. But I think uh, when, I look in, when I look in your eyes is... Um, yeah, When I Look In Your Eyes is the name of the song. I think that's his, his best song. But Moon River is spectacular as well. I saw him in concert in the late 80s. Had a girlfriend who loved Andy Williams. I did at the time. Saw him in L.A. In the late 80s, he put on a great show. Andy Williams. The next one is a hit by the um, that was written by Burt Bacharach and Hal David. It was a hit. This singer at the Grammys in 1964 won the Grammy for Best uh, Male Vocal Performance in 1964. That's how great and popular this song was. And the singer is Jack Jones. And the name of the song is Wives and Lovers. That is a groovy, um, you know, infectious vibe and groove to get into. By Jack Jones, Wives and Lovers, again, a back, Burt Backrack, Hal David song. It's a great vocal performance by Jack Jones. And lastly, these are two piano players, uh, a dual piano player playing group. Uh, they were very popular in the 60s, perhaps 70s, maybe in 50s, I believe. Ferrante and Teicher. Ferrante and Teicher. Their version of Exodus, their piano version of Exodus, it's just simply spectacular. So zero on my list as well. So those are a list of some of my favorite easy listening songs. 
Uh, please leave yours in the comment section below if you have any favorite easy listening songs and artists. I think it is an underrated genre. Um, I listen to easy listening because here's the thing. When I listen to music, I have one requirement. It's just one requirement. It just has to sound good. I don't care if it's rap, R&B, soul, jazz, classical, um, easy listening. Uh, it could be anything, bluegrass. Just as long as it sounds good, it's going to make it in my collection. And these records sound great. So please leave your favorite uh you know, easy listening songs in the comment section below and easy listening artists. Like I say, I left some of the major artists out, like the the obvious ones. I just want to give you some some artists that were not, not on the main road. I left like the Carpenters out, you know, Bobby Gentry is not on in here. She was she was great. You know, like I said, Sinatra, he can fit in the uh, easy listening category to some degree. A lot of um, the greats are left out, but this is just a small sample size. But like I said, please leave yours in the comment section below some of your favorite easy listening artists and songs. This is just a small sample of mine. Please like and subscribe. That'll help my channel out. It really would. Thank you very much for viewing my video. God bless, strong love, and peace to all worldwide.